Good morning. Uh, today we will discuss about the concept of a service token. This is basically a token for service provider. Uh, Rappi, in the Rappi world, we have the primary token we call the Prediction Cache, which we can show in our application here. But at the same time, we provide a more flexible uh, option for a service provider to be able to handle their own service token. A service token basically is controlled by the service provider and will have a corresponding service token asset that will be stored in the blockchain. So let's see, for example, in our blockchain, we have registered a service peer we call the Mercury Corporation. Right now, uh, Mercury Corporation doesn't have any service token yet, so we can check on the blockchain. It's empty. The service provider has the option to actually register a service token. This will become sort of an internal currency to the service peer. And we will try to register a service token on behalf of the service provider. When we try to register a service token, we have three important information that we need to provide. First is the name of the token. Let's say, for example, Mercury token. We also have to provide a symbol. In our case, we take the initial MT, which stands for Mercury token, the number of decimal places, and we have the option whether the token can be transferable between user to user or wallet to wallet. In this case, let's just say, for example, we don't want the user to be able to transfer uh, this particular token to another wallet, so we set it to false. So we will try to register this one. Okay, so you can see that the registration is successful. Now we can go back and refresh the uh, service token screen. Now you can see that uh, we have registered this information. So we have the name, we have the symbol empty, and right now it has a balance of zero. That means this particular token has zero balance in, in the blockchain. And you can see also the ownership this particular token is owned by Mercury, the company that uh, the service, the service peer that we have registered earlier. Now, the very first step to create the initial balance for the service token is we call it the service mint. So, what we can do is we will register a service mint. Okay, let's say, for example, we want to register 100,000 service token for Mercury token. So let's try to do that. Okay, so we have this reference number and we have successfully registered a service mint. It will actually create an asset in the blockchain in the form of service mint. So here you can see it's the amount is 100,000. And you will notice that the status is open because every servicement requires also an approval from the service approver uh, before it will take effect. So if you go back to the service token, the balance is till zero until such time that the servicement has been approved. In every service peer, there are two uh, important participants that will be assigned. We will check. So there is what we call the service provider. This acts as the manager for the service peer. And we also have the uh, service approver, which is responsible for approval of the uh, token mint. So now we will initiate the approval of the token so that we can see the balance uh, of the new token reflected. Okay, so we will perform the approval process. This is a simulation of the API calls. Okay, so as you can see, we have successfully approved. This is on behalf of the service approver. If we go back to the servicemen, 
you will notice that the status has now been changed to completed. And if we go back to our service token, it should also reflect now the new balance, which uh, is a 100,000 Mercury token with a symbol MT. Now we have already set up the uh, service token. This time we will try to implement and simulate how it works from the user side. So in this example, we have uh, one particular user named uh, Alex. Uh, aside from the main wallet, as you can see here, this is the main wallet, the main protection cash wallet. We also have the token wallet here which represent all the tokens issued by the service peer. Right now, Alex has basically an empty token wallet. Say, for example, we have another user here, Bobby, which also has an empty token wallet, but it has a balance for the primary wallet called the Protection Cash. So in this example, uh, we will perform a service peer distributing the token to a specific user. So let's say, for example, we want to transfer 1,000 Mercury token to Alex. So let's try to initiate that in our API. Okay, so we want to specify the recipient as Alex and the amount of the token that needs to be transferred to this wallet is 1000 so let's try to initiate the transaction okay so as you can see here it's successful and it creates also a service token transfer asset we will in check on that here this is your service token wallet which serve as your receipt for this particular transfer by the way i just want to emphasize that the service token transfer is from the service peer going to the user wallet. This is not the user to user transfer. This is from the service peer to user transfer. Now you can see here as a receipt, you have the 1000 and you also have the recipient here, which is Alex. And also which service peer is it coming from? Okay. Now, if we go back to the user, you will now see that there is now a token balance for MT. As you can see here, this is the token with the symbol MT. Because of the service token transfer, Alex now has a balance of 1,000 token. Okay, so this is very interesting. Aside from the main protection cash wallet, the user wallet can actually have multiple sub wallet for the tokens. Now, how does it look like from the front end side? So we will try to check. If we go to our front end, now you can see in our screen, you have the main protection cache and you also have your token wallet visible in, your, uh, in our Rappi prototype application. There, there could be multiple service peer later on and they can register different kinds of token, all your token will be shown in the application. Aside from the main protection cash balance, you will also have the list of your available service tokens. Okay. Now, for example, we want to perform a user to user token transfer. So let's say, for example, right now, if you look at here, we have a, another user called Bobby. For example, we want to transfer from Alex, let's say 1,000 or let's say 500 um, Mercury token into the Alex, uh, Bobby's wallet. So let's try to do that. Okay, so our recipient would be Bobby and we will say, let's transfer 500 of our Mercury token. Now, there's one more thing I would like to remind. Remember, uh, our Mercury token has been 
configure as non-transferable. Let's try to inspect that first. Okay, so this is our service token. If you notice that this is non-transferable. Okay, so that's why if we perform this user to user transfer, let's try to execute. You can see that the error shows that this token is non-transferable. That means if the non-transferable is set to false by the service provider, user cannot send a token to another user. It's not allowed. So it's a, a service-wide configuration. So for example, uh, we want to change now. If we want to make this transferable to true, we have an API available to the service provider that allows the um, service peer to have this token to be transferable. So let's try to do that. Okay. Okay, so we have here our API. We make this service token transferable, and this is have the authentication that it has to be the service provider that needs to execute this API. Okay, so if we set this to true and execute our API, now it's successful. So let's try to refresh our blockchain data in the page. Now you can see that the um, uh, transferable value has been set to true. That means it now allow the user to be able to transfer tokens across another user. Okay, so let's try to do that. Now we will try to execute again the token transfer that we have initiated before. But first, take note, if you are transferring a token to another token, there is a requirement from based on our policy that that particular recipient needs to be a member of the service peer. Okay, so I will show you first. If we go to our user, Alex is already a member of Mercury Corporation because he has this in his token wallet, a membership and a balance for the service token empty. But on the other hand, Bobby is not, does not belong to any uh, service peer. That's why he doesn't have any token wallet in his uh, account. So if we perform a transfer, let's say the recipient now is uh, Bobby, and we just want to make sure that the authentication. Ah, uh, no, we will tr uh, token transfer. Yes, here. So we just want to make sure that uh, user is Alex here, as you can see, and Alex would like to transfer. Uh, to Bobby 500 Mercury token. But again, Bobby is not a member of the Mercury token or does not have the Mercury token in his wallet. But let's try to execute and you will notice the error. See, the, the system will generate an error that the recipient does not have the Mercury token in his wallet because we do not allow sending a specific service token to a non-member. So it before you can transfer the uh, service token, make sure first that he belongs already to the service peer. So let's try to make the membership of Bobby to the Mercury service token. So let's try to do a membership. Okay, membership means it's basically the uh, service peer trying to transfer certain token amounts to Bobby. So in this case, let's say we want to transfer like uh, 700 token to uh, maybe 100 for example so we will try to transfer 100 token to Bobby this becomes automatically he becomes a membership and we can actually verify that in the blockchain afterwards so let's execute this API okay so it's successful if we go back to uh, our user and refresh now you can see that Bobby is now a member of 
the service token empty or he is now a member of the service peer mercury corporation okay so for example if we want to transfer let's say from alex which is a 1000 empty or mercury token we will transfer 500 of that to bobby here so let's try to do execute the transfer I remember earlier we got the error because bobby does not have this in his wallet but this time bobby is also a member of the mercury token so now we can initiate the transfer let's say 500 now this time it's successful so we can verify that let's try to refresh the user page now you can see that the earlier bobby has 100 now he got the uh, 600 because of the 500 token transfer and at the same time alex has earlier 1000 empty or mercury token is also deducted with the 500 uh, mercury token so that means 500 deducted from Alex and Bobby now be able to receive the Mercury token 500 that makes the Mercury token balance of 600. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Now let's see how we are going to use the token. So for example, let's take the example of uh, maybe Alex. So right now, Alex has a 500 Mercury token. He can actually consume this. So let's try to take an example. So first, let's check the balance of the service token. Right now, service token has a 98,900 balance. So for example, if Alex would like to buy certain commodity or virtual currency or you know, uh, take advantage of the service provided by the service peer, he can actually make a transaction that allows him to buy something, buy an item, maybe in-game item, or redeem the, uh, the uh, Mercury token. So he can perform that. Let's say, for example, if uh, Alex would like to consume uh, 100 of his uh, Mercury token balance. So let's try to simulate that. Okay, so normally what will happen is you specify uh, the, the API will specify the amount and then because you are, you know, trying to avail of a service or purchase an item, there is a reference number provided by the service peer and it will be populated in the system. Okay, so for example, we want to consume 100 protection, uh, sorry, 100 mercury token. So let's try to execute that. okay so if you will notice this is successful and there is actually a receipt created in the blockchain we call it the uh, consume service token here as you can see this is 100 uh, initiated by the user alex and this is the reference number now one thing you will notice because you are consuming or you are something like redeeming or you are buying from the service peer First thing is you get deducted with the amount. So for in, the, in this case of Alex earlier has a 500 mercury token. Now it becomes 400. And at the same time, the service peers uh, service token will also be added with the amount. So earlier we have been uh, balance of uh, 98,900. Now it becomes 100 more that makes it uh, 99,000. Quotation cash. So it's a process of consuming your Mercury token or redeeming your Mercury token. So uh, now we were able to demonstrate how a service peer will be able to register a sub token. And at the same time, we were able to perform a user to user transfer if, if the setting of the service token allows transferable to true. At the same time, we were able to demonstrate how to actually consume or utilize or use your mercury token or any service token available on your wallet okay so the workflow is very straightforward
And uh, I hope there will be more uh, service peer application that can utilize this kind of a sub currency token. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.